Hi darlings, welcome to our video on functional groups. Now, just to warn you, this will be a long video, so pause when needed. Um, you're going to need pen and paper, your notes, tables R and P. So we've seen table P before, that gives us the prefixes for any of our hydrocarbons. Table R is new, and actually we're going to explain all of what table R means. Um, it shows us a class of compounds, the functional groups, the general formula, and the examples. So make sure you have table R with you, because this is what we're introducing. So in this lesson, we're going to go through each of the class of compounds with you and explain what they mean. So the first one's a halide. Halide can also represent the halogens. Um, so we're going to be pretty much taking a hydrocarbon and adding a halogen to it. Halogen's anything from group 17. So it'll be fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, etc. And you're attaching that to the hydrocarbon. The general formula is Rx. R is going to be anything, any carbon, um, usually. So pretty much any of the hydrocarbon chain. And X, in this case, is your halide or halogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. So when we name this, we name this just like we would any hydrocarbon. So if you're still a little uh, shaky on hydrocarbons, make sure you go back to visiting um, or visit the video on the um, homologous series, which are the alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, and naming the hydrocarbons. So with naming halides, or we're going to show uh, pretty much the number shows what the halide is, just like it would for an alkyl group. And the halide becomes a prefix. So table R tells you what the prefixes are going to be for each of the elements. F is going to be fluoro, um, chlorine is going to be chloro, bromine, bromo, and I iodine is iodo. So we're going to use the example from table R. Go ahead and jot down the example and draw this molecule. Pause me. So this is what your molecule should look like. You should have three carbons. So the first carbon is, has three hydrogens around it. The second carbon has a hydrogen and chlorine. And the third carbon has three more hydrogens around it. So let's go ahead and name this. Again, we're going to name it just like we would a, a regular old uh, halogen. So we have three carbons. The three carbons uh, will be represented by the prefix prop. These are all going to be single bonds. We're going to have an, e, propane. Except we actually have chlorine in there. And the chlorine is on carbon number two, or the middle carbon. So it's going to be two chloropropane, and it's written here for you. Right, so those are your halides. Next are your alcohols. Your alcohols are easy to recognize because they actually have an OH group attached to the hydrocarbon chain. So here's the general formula. The R represents um, the hydrocarbon chain, so any of those carbons, and the OH is going to be the functional group here. When you name this, uh, just like you would naming other halid or excuse me, other alkanes. Um, in this case, the number shows where the alcohol is, and the hydrocarbon ends in OL this time. So go ahead and write this down. We have CH3, CH2, CH2, and OH. And if we condense this down, it's C3H7OH. Draw the molecule. So we have the three carbons and OH group attached to this. And so let's go ahead and name it. We have carbons one, two, and three. So we have three carbons, so we have prop. These are all single bonds, so we have AN uh, for an alkane and ANE. Except this time, since we have an alcohol, we actually change that E, we drop the E and make it OL instead. So it's propanol, and that OH group is attached to the first carbon, so it's one propanol. And here's some miscellaneous stuff. You'll hear about primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohols. The primary alcohol is an OH group that's attached to a carbon. That's how we have our alcohol. And that carbon's attached to another carbon, so it's one carbon attached to this main one. The secondary alcohol has 
two carbons attached to the um, carbon that the OH is attached to. So we have one and then another carbon over here. So that's why I have secondary. And then we have tertiary. So go ahead and give a guess as to what tertiary means. So we have the carbon with the OH here, and it's attached to one, two, three more carbons. This is generally a multiple choice question. All right, so we'll take a look at their ethers. Here we're going to add just an oxygen between two carbons, and these are single bonded. So the general formula is ROR, so we have an oxygen in the middle of a hydrocarbon. So we name these uh, hydrocarbons as alkyl groups. So first you find where the oxygen is, and then each of the hydrocarbon chains are named as alkyls. The smallest one goes first, then the, sec the largest one, and then it ends in ether. So go ahead and write down the example and draw this. Pause me. Here's our example. So first thing we do is find the oxygen, which is right here. And then we name each of the hydrocarbon chains as alkyl groups. The one to the left over here is the smallest one. It has one carbon, so it's methyl. The hydrocarbon on the right has two carbons, so it's ethyl. And then we end with the word ether. So it sounds like a math mouthful, but it actually helps you, um, especially when you're trying to draw these from the names. It's methyl ethyl ether. The next is an aldehyde. The aldehyde has a double bonded oxygen to um, a carbon, and that carbon has a hydrogen attached to it. This one is going to be different from the next one that we're doing because we have a double bonded oxygen with that carbon, and that carbon has the hydrogen there. So the hydrogen is the main key thing here. Here is the general formula. So here is our double bonded carbon and oxygen. And then to the right over here is a hydrogen. So we would name this as we would any other hydrocarbon, except it ends in AL. Go ahead and jot this down and draw the picture. Double check your picture. And notice that we actually have uh, CHO to show that this one's going to be an aldehyde. If we had OH, that would have shown an alcohol instead, so we would have drawn it completely differently. All right, and then we'll name this. So we have three carbons, so we know we need to have prop. They're all single bonded, so we'd have ane. However, it's going to be an aldehyde, so that E is dropped and we have an AL instead. And since this would usually end up being at the end of a chain, we don't need to have a number. So it's propanal. The next is a ketone. So a ketone aldehyde looks similar. However, a ketone has a double bonded oxygen, and on either side of those carbons, there's more hydrocarbons attached. So the general formula has the double bonded oxygen to the carbon, and on either end are two R groups, or two hydrocarbons, whereas an aldehyde would have had a hydrogen on one of these ends. When we name this, uh, we just use that hydrocarbon and change it to own, O-N-E. We use a number here to show where that double bonded oxygen is. Here's our example. Go ahead and draw a picture for it and then double check. Here's the picture. So we have to find first where the carbon double bonded oxygen is. It's going to be right here. And then we count up the number of carbons. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So we know we have pent. These are all single bonds, so it's A-N, E, like pentane. However, we drop that E and make it own instead, so it's pentanone. And we have to number the carbons, and the just like an alkyl group, the lowest number goes closest to the group. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So it ends up being two pentanone. The 
The next ones are organic acids. They're also called carboxylic acids. Um, so make sure that you label that in table R as well. Carboxylic acids um, are generally used. Um, that Their name is generally used, and they're the same as organic acids. So here, they're a double bonded oxygen again, but this time they're attached to an OH. So make sure you don't get them confused with alcohols. Look for that double bonded oxygen in these carboxylic acids or organic acids. The general formula, we have the C double bonded O, and it's attached to an OH. I also put this here, COOH. Look for that, star that, make sure that you recognize the COOH because that can help you determine if it's an organic acid, um, also known as carboxylic acid. That's usually a key for us or a helpful hint. So when we name this, we just name the hydrocarbon and change it to an oic acid. So go ahead and draw or write down the example and draw this for yourself. And notice that we also have the COOH here for you, so you know it's an organic acid. Here is the picture for that one. So we have one, two, three carbons, so we know it's going to be prop for the prefix. They're all single bonded, so it's AN. We'd write, normally write down A-N-E. However, we're going to change that ending to oic acid. So it's propanoic acid. The next one is an ester. Those are our sweet smelling molecules. And here we'll have another double bonded oxygen and a second oxygen in there attached to the hydrocarbon chain. So, for esters, look for both oxygens, and they're going to be sandwiched in the middle of carbons. Here's our general formula. So here's our double bonded oxygen, and then the other oxygen there. On either side will be more carbons. When we name this, the alkyl group is attached to the oxygen, so you'll find the oxygen and the alkyl group is next to it. The main chain is the one with the double bonded carbon and oxygen, and it ends at O8. So go ahead and write down the example and draw the structure. Double check your structure here. And then we will first look for the oxygen in the chain. So here's our oxygen in the chain. The alkyl group is the one attached to this. So that's a methyl. And then the one with the double bonded oxygen, we'll go ahead and name those. So it's three carbons, prop, all single bonded, so we'll have ane, except we'll drop that E and make it O8. So we have methyl propano 8. Here we have um, an amine. Amine, we have nitrogens in here. So amine and amides are very unique because they have nitrogen. So look for that nitrogen. Um, you might have recognized these. Sorry, I don't know if that cut off for you guys, but here we have an amine. Um, you recognize these as an amino acid. They have nitrogens in there as well. So these are hydrocarbons with nitrogens attached to them. Their general formula has the nitrogen and more carbons. So you might, instead of having um, hydrogens here, or excuse me, instead of having carbons here, you might have hydrogens here, and that's okay. Just like we would for an amino acid. The name ends in an amine, and the number represents where the nitrogen is. So write down the example, draw the structure for yourself, and then double check the structure with me. So here they show the condensed formula. So really, we could show that the more hydrogens around each of these. And I prefer this just as we're, we're learning a little bit more, so that's fine. So we'll show each of these. Okay. Um, and we would recognize this actually looks a little bit more backwards, but we have an NCC. That's the base for an amino acid. So this isn't an amino acid, but it looks pretty close to one of them. 
So we have one, two, three carbons. So we know we'll have the prefix prop. They are all single bonded, so we'll have prop an. However, we'll drop the E to make it an amine. And the nitrogen is on carbon number one, so one propamine. And last but not least, we have an amide. So the amide will also have a nitrogen, except this time it has an oxygen attached to it. And then oxygen's, or excuse me, os an oxygen in the formula or in the compound with a double bonded carbon. So here's our general formula. We have the carbon double bonded oxygen, and that's attached to a nitrogen. So the name ends in an amide. Go ahead and write down the formula and draw a structure for this. Double check your structure. So we have the three carbons, one, two, three. So we know we have to probe. They're all single bonded, so we'll make it A and E. However, we'll drop that E and change it to an amide instead. All right, and we show that these um, actually don't end up having um, a number with this one because it's all the way here at the end. It has a hydrogen right there. So it's called propanamide or propanamide. All right, to summarize, use table R. Know how to use it. Um, don't be afraid of those examples. They're there to help you. And draw all over table R. Make sure that you see that there's going to be uh, the names themselves help you, or the examples help you name them. So, for example, the first one, the halide, shows you the chloros there, the OL for the alcohol, ether there, the AL for the aldehyde, ON for the ketone, a wick acid for the organic acid, the OH for the ester, the amine for the amine, and the amide for the amide. Um, and they are there to help you, so please use Table R, guys. Have a great day.